Hello, my friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today I'm going to talk about the moon's true node and the moon's mean node and some surprising information. At least it was surprising to me when I looked at this very closely. Um, what are the moon's nodes? Well, the moon's nodes are where the path of the moon crosses, or you could use the word intersects, the path of the Earth. Very simple idea. The Earth is going around the sun, so it has a path. The moon is going around the Earth. It has a path. <clears throat> those two paths intersect at two points opposite to each other, and those are the moon's nodes. It seems like a straightforward idea. Why do we have two different nodes? What's going on here? Well, let's look at some things here. When the moon crosses the path of the Earth, um, the moon has zero latitude, by definition, because latitude is the distance from the ecliptic plane. So once a month, the moon should be conjunct the north node or south node when, and that will occur when the moon's latitude is zero north zero zero. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If that sounded confusing, this should make it clearer. Here is um, a chart wheel, happens to be for January 12, 2015, at 4.34 p.m. I don't know why I did it in Milan, Italy. Um, so at this particular chart, which is Greenwich Mean Time, 15.34, um, the moon's latitude is exactly zero. To prove that to you, or to demonstrate that to you, I'm going to go here, I'm in Sirius 1.3 software, I'm going to go to listings, planet asteroid positions list, and then planet position list. This gives you a nice big uh, type that you can see. And there's the moon at zero north, zero, zero. The sun is always at zero. It'll either say zero south or zero north, because it's it's really just zero, by definition. Uh, the, the sun, as seen geocentrically, is the same as the Earth seen heliocentrically. So the sun has zero uh, latitude, by definition. Now, the moon's latitude changes, but this is the exact time when the moon is right, at, right on the ecliptic plane. So the lat therefore, the latitude is zero. If I go to time adjust, and I go back one minute, I'm going to go back one minute. See this zero north zero zero. I click, and now it's zero south. So with, I'm within one minute of the time when the moon is exactly at zero latitude, and you can use the time adjust to just move forward until that happens. Now I could get it down to a second of time, but it's it's unnecessary accuracy. So the point is, I've by using time adjust, I found the time when the moon's latitude is zero, which means the moon is on the ecliptic plane. The moon is on the ecliptic plane, that means it must be conjunct the north node or the south node. has to be, by definition. Let's see if it is. I cancel out of this. Let's look at the wheel. Here's, where's the moon? Down here, 13 Libra 42. North node is not. They're not conjunct. This is disturbing to me. I don't like this. The, the moon has zero latitude, means it's on the ecliptic plane. That's our definition of what the moon's node is. Well, why is it not on the north node? This is, this is confusing. Um, well, one thing is, this is the mean node, as it says right here. And down here in this little box, it's telling me the true node, the true moon's node is 13 Libra 42, and that is conjunct the moon. Well, who? At least that's good news. At least the true node is actually conjunct the moon when the moon is on the ecliptic plane. So the bottom line is, by the definition of what the moon's nodes are, the moon must be uh, conjunct either the north node or south node when the moon has zero latitude. It's only true for the true moon's node. You know, I would have thought it would have been true for the mean moon's node as well. Mean moon's node means the average speed of the moon. You might think it would be the average speed uh, from the time the moon is on the ecliptic plane to the next time it's on the ecliptic plane. But that's not the case. It's some average speed over huge periods of time. And the moon's, moon, the moon's mean node, well, that's a tongue twister. The moon's mean node is not conjunct the moon, even when the moon is on the ecliptic plane, which is kind of weird, since that's what the definition of what, of what the nodes are. Uh, and if we go ahead a month, 
to the next time it occurs, uh, same thing happens. Oh, let me pull up this bigger wheel. Uh, and I could do that time adjust and show you that this is the exact, within a minute of the exact time. Uh, but I won't bother that, you know, with that. It, it's true. This is uh, February 8, 2015, Greenwich Mean Time 17, 10, 28. Uh, and again, we see the moon's node, uh, mean node is not conjunct the moon. In fact, it's almost two degrees different. Holy moly, it's not even close. The true node at 11 Libra 04 um, is exactly conjunct the moon. And, and if I go to the next month, we could do this, you know, dozens of times. We're going to see the same thing. But I'll show you one more example. I go to the next month. I'm now at March 7, 2015. Greenwich Mean Time is 21.05.02. Uh, within one minute of time of when the moon is exactly on the ecliptic plane. In other words, has zero latitude. And again, the mean node in this case is almost a degree and a half away from the moon, the true node at 10 Libra 00, zero exactly conduct the moon. So, to conclude, what we have found is um, that uh, we would expect, as I've got here in this last uh, sentence here on, on this uh, PowerPoint presentation, we might expect that both the true node and the mean node will be conjunct the moon when the moon's node when the moon's node latitude is exactly zero because you might think that the mean node is the average speed from the time the moon crosses the ecliptic plane to the next time it crosses it but it is not the moon's mean node is an average speed over some huge incredibly long time period so it does not even uh, the, the moon's node is, is not even conjunct the moon when the moon's latitude is zero, uh, which means it's not where the ecliptic plane is. It's averaged over huge time periods. Um, so that's a little bit disturbing to me, that the definition of what the moon's node is as the intersection of the moon's path and the Earth's path uh, that they that even when the moon is on the path of the earth or geocentrically the path of the sun is the same thing uh, heliocentrically it's the path of the earth geocentrically it's the path of the sun that even when the moon is on exactly on uh, the path of the earth it's not on the node the node is somewhere else which doesn't fit the definition uh, so it's really an average node over huge amounts of time um, and and it's the moon's path changes so much that the moon's no the mean node is not even conduct the moon each month when the moon crosses the Earth's path. That's rather disturbing to me anyway, just conceptually. So only the true node meets our expectation that uh, when the the moon is on the ecliptic plane, uh, the node would be conjunct the either the north node or south node. Uh, so, as I said, the moon's mean node is, is averaged over long periods of time, uh, and the ecliptic plane uh, and the, 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 the moon's path uh, change so much that they're not even conjunct when they, you might say, should be um, each month. So I think it is reasonable to conclude that the, the mean node of the moon doesn't meet the definition of what the moon's node is. This is sort of a radical thing. I don't want to get into any, you know, big arguments or controversies here, but a lot of us astrologers use the moon's mean node, and when you actually look at it, it's, it's a little bit weird. Um, I mean, there's different ways of thinking about things, but at least the way I'm trying to think of it, it's a little strange that, that uh, the moon is not conjunct the moon, mean moon's node, um, when it should be, when it's on the ecliptic plane. Um, now, so is the true node the answer? Should we all be using the true node? Well, the true node has some problems as well, or at least potential problems, that have been bothering me for years. And just recently, about a month ago, um, it, it kept, I just couldn't stand it anymore, and I had to research this. 
And this is the problem with the true node. Uh, the problem with the true node is it's really difficult to define what the moon's path is. You might say, what's the problem? I mean, the moon goes around the earth, it's got a path. Why don't we know where it is? Well, here's why it's difficult to know where it is. I've made a graph of the longitude of the moon. I, ju I just made this up. So the, the moon is going through, this would be the, this is like a graphic ephemeris if you're used to that. This would be the moon's position uh, magnified uh, over seconds of time. And the problem might be this, as you know, this would be like one, two, three, four, five seconds. What, what if the moon, as it gets perturbed, these are called perturbations, where as another planet gets close to the, to the moon, it slows it down or speeds it up. And what if the moon, over very small periods of time, is speeding up and then it gets close to a planet and it slows it down, if the moon's path over very short periods of time is not smooth, then what would happen is we determine the moon's path by looking at where it is at two points in time. So here's the path of the moon, and now I've shown you on the right side the same exact graph, but showing you the problem that if we go from this point in time, where this black dot is, to this point in time, this would be the path of the moon from this point of time to this point of time. And you have where this arrow is pointing, this would be the definition of the moon's path. But from this point of time to this point of time, uh, this arrow would be. And so I've drawn a bunch of arrows to show the problem that all of these could be paths uh, of the moon. Uh, because the path of the moon is is the path of where the moon is from one moment to the next. So the moon's path is only going to be stable if these perturbations don't cause the, the moon to have this very wavy um, a wavy look to it over short periods of time. Um, so, does the moon have a path like this? Well, it's not entirely clear. We don't have a simple way to solve this problem. Um, so, what you can do is just calculate the moon over periods of time and see what happens. And I did this. Um, so, there's not a simple, it may not be any, what we sometimes call in mathematics an analytic solution, uh, a simple formula so we can determine what the moon's node is, the actual node, true node means actually where it is, by calculating the position of the moon's node at intervals. We calculate the moon's node, the moon, uh, the moon position now, a second later, try two seconds apart, three seconds apart, and based on those moon positions, you figure out where the moon's node is and see how it moves. Um, and there are two ways to do the calculations. You can do it from orbital elements. That's the way the Swiss ephemeris does it. Whoops, got a typo there, word ephemeris. Uh, or by using spherical trigonometry. Um, so I've been concerned about this for many years. I, I've been concerned that I don't know if the true node position of the moon is somewhat arbitrary. Why would it be arbitrary? It would be arbitrary if, if the moon's... Uh, positions are not fairly smooth over short periods of time and then any of these ecliptic planes might seem could be you could say uh, argue that they're all valid and we don't know where it is um, so um, so I've been concerned about this so I use the spherical trigonometry solution I use spherical tr trigonometry uh, to calculate where the moon's node position is um, and I calculated the moon's position um, when they're one second apart, two seconds apart, three seconds apart, you know, up to, I think, a minute apart, to see if the, using spherical trigonometry, if the moon's node uh, is fairly stable or if it jumped around. And hallelujah, I got good news when I did this. The moon's node varies only about one minute of longitude, usually much less than that, over varying distances of time. Uh, and in fact, the little uh, program code that I wrote 
I put into a future version of Sirius and provide a menu item to get to it, just in case somebody wants to play around with that and, and verify it or see it for themselves. Um, that will be possible at some future time. It's not the kind of technical thing most people want to do. Um, but the point is, the moon's uh, true node is stable. Uh, and that's good, because that means... Okay, that's the end of my PowerPoint presentation. That means that when we look at this wheel, and it says the true node is 10 Libra 0, 0. In fact, I'll right-click on this wheel, click on Customize, and here I have a choice of moon's node. I'm going to change it from moon to true. Uh, it asks me if I want to use this for all wheel styles. No, I'll just use it for this wheel style. OK, OK, OK. And now I've got the true node selected. And over here in the box, the, the, the mean node, for those who want to know that. And there it is. Beautiful. Moon, 10 Libra, 0, 0. The north node, 10 Libra, 0, 0. This is at a point in time on March 7, 2015 at GMT 210502 when the moon is exactly on the ecliptic plane. It's there and this node is, the calculation for it is, is stable. Uh, we know that it is there. Um, I've been so concerned about this. This is a true nerd who gets concerned about these technical calculations. Uh, I finally, uh, after many years of thinking about it, took the time to, to program that to verify for myself that it that it's a stable position. That's where the moon's node is. Um, so, conclusion is, uh, concluding points here are that you now have a good idea what the means node is. It's an average position of, of the node. You may believe the node is moving at an average speed. Um, and because the ecliptic plane, not the ecliptic plane, it's actually the path of the moon, is wobbling around so much um, over long periods of time that with the mean node, uh, the moon is not even conjunct the north node when the moon is on the ecliptic plane. With the true node it is, um, as we would hope it would be, and further good news about the true node, uh, we do know where the position of the node is. I have at least confirmed that to my own satisfaction uh, by testing it, that we can take the moon's position at two periods of time, and we can vary that period of time and the moon's node continues to be uh, at the same position. Of course, if you, if you make the time distance between the moon calculations too long, if you make it, you know, like a half hour, then it's it wouldn't be correct because uh, it shouldn't be because the, the moon has has gotten perturbed. But those perturbations don't affect the moon's position over short periods of time. Anyway, it's a little bit technical. Bottom line is, if you're not too technical, is the, we know where the true moon's node is. You might have thought we always knew where it was. Uh, and, you, you know, some people think, well, you know, scientists know everything. Um, but no, they they don't. Um, and so I verified that we do know where the true moon's node position is. It makes sense. And on the other hand, somewhat disturbing and maybe surprising is that the moon's mean node um, does, uh, does not uh, do what... At least I, w you know, many of us would expect it to do, which is to be on the uh, moon when the moon is on the ecliptic plane. Uh, so that's it. Some information about moon, the mean node and true node. Uh, I hope that helps you get a better understanding of what they are and some of the issues with them. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, take care. God bless. Namaste.